In 2005, Weta Digital created the visual effects for the 2005 King Kong film directed by Peter Jackson. At the time, it had cutting visuals with praiseworthy character modeling and design, especially for creatures, which was a very, very, very hard thing to do back then. This was the case for not having proper sculpting software like the ones we have today. So a software called Mudbox had to be created to fill this gap. And boy, did it fill that gap. It was like a medicine nobody asked for, but everybody needed. Mudbox went on to be one of the best tools in the industry to make complex characters for big VFX and game development projects, so it was basically the industry standard. But despite being a promising software at its inception, over the years, it had failed to maintain the popularity it had among artists and studios for many different reasons. As a result, it is hardly used today. It went from being a software that people were happy to pay thousands of dollars to use to being a neglected 3D software that nobody wants to use, even for as little as 10 bucks per month. In this video, we will explore how Mudbox rose to prominence with an amazing potential and bright future and how over the years it fell from grace and it is now dwelling in a forgotten place. This is the story of the rise and fall of Mudbox. One of the main challenges in the early days of computer graphics in the early 2000s was the lack of sophisticated 3D software for creating organic 3D models. Early 3D sculpting software were often limited in their capabilities and required a great deal of labor to create simple organic 3D characters animals and other stuff that were hardly close to what we can achieve today. Additionally, the software were often slow and cumbersome, making it difficult to make changes to the models quickly and efficiently to the extent that VFX artists wanted. It was almost impossible for 3D artists to create a 3D character with all its wrinkles, skin pores and the nitty-gritty details for close-up shots in the same level that was required. But all that was gonna change when a small company called SkyMatter in New Zealand decided to take this problem seriously. SkyMatter founders David Cardwell, Tibor Majar, and Andrew Kamenich were working on the Lord of the Rings at Weta Digital Circa in 2001. They created the software to expand their own toolsets, and Mudbox was first used as a complete product in the 2005 film King Kong. It was used extensively in the creation of the visual effects for that film, and it was used primarily for creating and texturing the 3D models for the film's various creatures, including King Kong himself. One of the advantages of Mudbox in this context was its ability to handle high-resolution organic models. The models of the creatures in King Kong were incredibly complex, with millions of polygons which made them highly detailed and realistic back in the day. Mudbox's ability to handle these high-resolution models allowed the film's visual effects artists to create high-quality detailed textures and surface details for the creatures, which helped to make them more realistic on the screen. What Mudbox was able to achieve, I believe, was a stepping stone for many proprietary software that Weta Digital has developed over the years like Facets, Manuka, Tissue, Odin, Wig, Lumberjack, and many more. On the same film, Mudbox was used to create fur and hair for the creatures. The software sculpting brushes and tools allowed artists to sculpt and shape the fur and hair in a way that closely mimicked the way it behaves in real life. And this was revolutionary. This helped to create a more realistic look and feel to the creatures on the screen. In addition to its sculpting and texturing capabilities, Mudbox was also used for painting the textures on the models, which was extremely helpful. In the early 2000s, digital sculpting and painting software has become an essential tool for artists in the film, video game, and animation industries. The likes of ZBrush that was released to the public in the early 2000s, but it wasn't as great as it is today, so keep that in mind. ZBrush, for example, didn't become serious till Mudbox showed up as a fierce leader in the field of 3D sculpting and painting as it was used in many blockbuster films under the roof of Weta Digital especially. In addition to being used in King Kong in 2005, 
One of the first films to use Mudbox was The Chronicles of Narnia the Lion, also The Witch and the Wardrobe in 2005, where it was used for character design and character creation. Since then, Mudbox has been used in many other films, including Avatar in 2009, The Avengers in 2012, and The Guardians of the Galaxy in 2014, in addition to Star Wars The Force Awakens in 2015, just to name a few. Around the same time in mid and late 2000s, other companies like The Foundry released one of the best software in the field of VFX called Mari. In addition to 3D Code in 2007, which does a lot of things that Mudbox was capable of doing at the time. In 2007, Autodesk acquired SkyMatter, the company that developed Mudbox. At the time, Mudbox was gaining popularity in the film and game development industries for its powerful digital sculpting and painting tools. The acquisition of SkyMatter and Mudbox by Autodesk was part of a bigger plan to expand Autodesk's presence in the media and entertainment industry which is obvious today, but back then, it wasn't so obvious to the general public. Mudbox was seen as a complementary addition to Autodesk's existing software offerings, which included Maya, Max, and Softimage, and all of them by the way were acquired by Autodesk. After the acquisition, Autodesk continued to develop Mudbox, adding new features and integrations with other Autodesk products, but this was not gonna last unfortunately. As a few years went by, users were seeing a lack of development over releases. When the software was initially released, Autodesk promised to offer a new approach to digital sculpting and painting, providing artists with an intuitive and easy-to-use toolset. However, the lack of updates and improvements over the years has made Mudbox less attractive to artists, to say the least. So, artists were looking for advanced tools and features, actually moved to other software. Other software such as ZBrush in 2010s not only caught up, but evolved to introduce new features, but Mudbox remained stagnant under the leadership of Autodesk. To put it simply, Autodesk has failed to keep up with the changing needs of the industry and the demands of artists, resulting in a lack of interest in the software. The lack of updates has made the software less competitive, as it does not offer the same level of functionality as other software tools. The software lacked certain features that were considered essential in the industry, such as advanced UV mapping, retopology tools, and complex baking tools. As a result, artists were more likely to choose software that offered a broader range of features, the likes of ZBrush and 3D Code. As a user on Quora puts it, I have personally found that Mudbox stops out much faster. You can master Mudbox in a couple of months, but after that, you will probably start coasting. ZBrush is harder to learn and takes longer to become familiar, but it seems that it can be significantly more productive in the hands of a committed user. The fact that ZBrush manages to be a leading sculpting package despite its oddball interface is testimony to how deep it is. Another side of the puzzle is the fact that, as we were entering the 2010s, the demand for high-end and especially modern interchange formats was becoming greater to make sure that all parts of the production pipeline work smoothly. But due to its development state, Mudbox had limited support, which is a significant drawback for professionals who needed to work on various formats, especially that now a lot of new mediums are available such as virtual reality, 3D printing, real-time rendering, etc. This limitation made it difficult for Mudbox to compete with other software in the industry, such as ZBrush for example, which has a wide support for existing formats and it is actively being developed further. Furthermore, the limited export format options made it difficult for artists to collaborate with others. Artists working on big projects with modern pipelines and using new formats such as Pixar USD had a hard time using Mudbox, which only supported own formats such as ABX and OBJ, which is still widely used till this day. As you know, many studios are upgrading their software pipelines and using more complex data exchange formats. This is not a deal breaker, but more of an annoyance as it led to slowdowns and inefficient workflows. Eventually, Mudbox supported Pixar PTAX in 2014, which was a smart move, I'm not gonna lie. 
P-Tanks is a very advanced UV less texturing technology developed and open sourced by Pixar and lets you paint 3D meshes without the need to make a UV map, which is amazing, while exporting paint layers as PSD files, which is a basic but essential feature for any painting program. For a deep dive into P-Tanks, you can take a look at the video we created about this recently. Before we continue, if you are interested in learning more about how to learn 3D modeling and animation, I recommend you try Skillshare. You may know Skillshare for photography, video editing, and illustration classes, but it actually has many animation, game development, and VFX-focused stuff. For example, Next on Skillshare offers tens of classes like this one called 3ds Max 2023 for Beginners, which helps you learn the basics of Max. And if you are interested in creating characters, there are three classes, one about Blender, one about ZBrush, and one about Maya. And all of these are just from one creator. So you can access thousands of classes every month for less than it will cost you to get just one. So the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Another significant drawback of Mudbox was its limited integration with other software, such as Substance Painter and Designer for example. Substance is an industry standard texturing software that many artists and studios rely on, and the ability to work seamlessly with it or the inability to do so for Mudbox made it less desirable. Today, you will hardly find any 3D modeling or painting software that does not natively support the reading of Substance material files, for example Houdini, Max, and even Blender can all import Substance Painter and Designer files directly. The same goes for Unreal Engine and Unity, a standard in game development and real-time applications. Almost all 3D packages offer a live link plugin for Unreal, like Max, Houdini, and Maya to name a few. For example, some Sys materials are completely integrated inside both Unreal and Unity with native support and active development. No such integration is available to Mudbox. In contrast to Mudbox, ZBrush offers GoZ, a plugin that allows for seamless integration with other 3D modeling and texturing software. With GoZ, users can transfer their ZBrush models and textures to and from other software such as Maya, Max, Photoshop, and so on. This integration streamlines the workflow for 3D artists by allowing them to easily move between programs without the need to normally export and import files. On the other hand, Mudbox only has a basic send to function that sends FBX files to Autodesk products, namely Max, Maya, and sadly the deceased Softdimash. This lack of interoperability limits and slows down the workflow for artists, and as a result, they are more likely to choose a software that can easily integrate with other tools. So as you can see, Mudbox faces stiff competition from other software in the industry, software such as ZBrush and Blender, and it has a hard time finding its place on the market. On the other end of the spectrum, ZBrush offers far more advanced features compared to Mudbox. Simply because ZBrush has become the industry standard and has a broad community of users with a complete ecosystem of plugins, brushes, tools, and libraries. On the other hand, Blender is a free software that is rapidly gaining popularity among artists. The software offers some similar features to Mudbox and some more advanced features than Mudbox while being free, which is amazing, making it a more attractive option for artists who are just starting out and trying to embark on 3D modeling and sculpting as a hobby. In fact, as of late, the Blender development team is adding features similar to what you can find using ZBrush, which is even more impressive. Talking about other competing software, we have Sculptress, which is another free contender to Mudbox. It is a sort of watered-down version of ZBrush. However, it is now officially abandoned, but you can still download it and use it for free. But I personally don't recommend that since you have Blender. Last but not least, we have 3 d Coat, a lesser known 3D sculpting program, but very powerful and very actively developed with many interesting features and tools. If you are interested, you can take a look at the recent videos we created about 3 d Coat and how it can help you work on 3D projects. So with all these options, it is very hard for Mudbox 
an almost a dead program to retain its old user base, let alone find new users. I also personally think that why nobody uses Mudbox in these days is a lack of development and especially marketing from Autodesk. Over the years, Autodesk has failed to promote Mudbox effectively, making it less effective and visible for artists. As a result, many artists are not even aware of the software, and there are a lot who are not willing to invest in it, especially in the old days due to lack of exposure and lack of information about it. Today, it seems that Autodesk does not know what to do with the software. It's not killed nor developed, which makes it essentially just an abandoned ware. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please subscribe to this channel to stay updated with new videos just like this one. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.